so a recap for those who weren't there last time. Yeah, and while you're doing that, I'm going to grab my onesie. Yeah, it's fair. Oh, it's a full <laughs> onesie party. Damn, mm -hmm. I don't even have one of those. Um, oh, well, I know what you're getting for Christmas. Oh, I'm touched. Except, <laughs> please don't. It's way too warm at any point in this apartment. It's so, Yeah, this is very warm. Yes. What an argument. <laughs> uh, but yes, um, the, the people who weren't there last time, um, our heroes had been trapped in a cave by goblins. Um, which were then brutally murdered by heroes while our heroes watched and sold them poutine the entire time. So I think the moral of the story is that capitalism makes monsters of us all, especially if you're a poutine salesman. <laughs> so they're on the run right now, and that's that's where we're going to drop in here. So once Kelly returns, we'll get a full comprehensive introduction of characters. Ah, there's the man right there. What's up? Uh, we're going to get an introduction of our characters once again for our final route of this uh, mishap and adventure that I've created for you all. So, uh, mishap? Like, are you mispronouncing the word misshapen? No. Okay. Um, making up words because the English language is a wonderful thing where you can just jam stuff together. And if you have enough context to it, people will sound it out and it'll work. That's actually Josh. The name of Josh's new blog about things that are happening in Edmonton, um, <laughs> which he writes under the pseudonym Miss Happen. Yes, yes, definitely. Thank you. Uh, I would clap, but I don't want to make my microphone pop. Fair. Uh, Josh, yes. actually, we can before we go on. I did. I didn't even ask you. What's your favorite way to pet your cat and/or dog? Well, the nice thing with this cat that I've gotten recently, who I would show, but she seems to be sleeping and I don't want to bug her, is that she loves tummy rubs and not in the way that most cats do, where they, like, show their belly and you're like, oh, they want a belly rub, and then they immediately just start, like, clawing your hand up. She mm -hmm. actually, like, flips over and just like, please, just rub my belly for as long as possible. Uh, so that's usually how I engage with her, is I'll walk over and annoy her and then just tap her belly and she'll flip over and now rub it. I like that you guys have this nonverbal communication thing going on where you just have to poke her in the belly and then she flops. Yeah, straight up. It's great. That's I've only great. had her for, what, two weeks now? And she's just, like, she's always lived here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Made for each other. So it seems. But yes, so on to the game. Um, we'll start with you as usual, Kelly. What, what, uh, what was your character again? Why don't you remind the audience? Uh, my character's name is an Angina Pectoris. Um, she is packed and stacked, especially in the back. And and China has spent years chaining one scheme after another to cheat her lovers out of their disposable income. Uh, of course, she caught a little too much heat on the last one and needs to lay low in the last place anyone would think to look for her, doing honest work. Now, I, of course, I wrote that before this whole adventure started. I'm not sure that Angina has done the best job of laying low, whether or that's honestly. by... Yeah, like <laughs> hanging out with people that are well. I was doing honest work, and no, you're right. I, yeah, I kind of stopped that also. Yeah, I feel like between hanging out with the like eye gouging people and getting wrapped up in a big scheme to like marry this I don't know weird chieftain of an orc village to I don't know the whole debacle with the like reanimating rat zombies or whatever last time. I feel like Angina has actually been very visible. This is probably not uh, in her best interest, but we'll see. And next is Nicole. Okay. Um, so my character is uh, Gondelf. Um, I am a an elf and wizard. Um, uh, I got lazy and when I was filling out the what do you look like category, and so I just decided that I look like whatever your perception of an elf is. That's how I appear to people. <coughs> um, but uh, basically, I'm a wizard who is working hard to put themselves through wizard college. Um, but despite taking out a substantial wizard loan, I've been forced to work a part-time wizard job selling frozen goat's milk treats at my parents' ice cream business, The Fairy Queen. Perfect, perfect. And now, finally, our guest here, if you would not mind uh, stating what your character's name is and what they do as a food cart entrepreneur. 
Absolutely. So my character's name is Genevieve Gazelle. Um, I am a human who happened to uh, skin a giraffe and has it as my standard uniform while I'm <laughs> operating my business. My business is I sell uh, burritos that named after precious metals. I haven't had a name of my actual cart yet, but the, uh, the top three items of my menu are the golden guacamole, the silvery fishy tacos, and the platinum level beef burrito brilliant perfect uh, i'm just gonna write down one of those because that golden guac actually sounds amazing <laughs> and i need to need to remind myself of that whenever i have the chance because if i ever open a burrito stand that'll be what i'm calling it i might awesome. put gold flakes in it since that seems to be the trend right now with influencer food mm. so well it's trademarked now gold. josh so Oh, yes, this is true. I'm going to get run into a trade war here now. But <laughs> yes. So when we last left our adventures, they were fleeing from a goblin cave after the heroes massacred the entire goblin thing. And so it was it was horrible. I, there's been so much more blood in this campaign than I expected there to be. Uh, so as you're running away from this cave, though, you hear the sound of almost like a muffled crash, like, like something dr that was being moved coming to a direct halt. And when you look, you see that there appears to be someone in some sort of animal skin outfit with a cart with its wheel fallen off. And being that you guys are on the run right now from fleeing goblins and potentially heroes that are stuffed on poutine now, uh maybe that cart would be a good way of getting out of here so what are you gonna do my two intrepid long-term heroes here so i just want to be uh clear on the situation so we were selling uh poutine to these uh to these hungry adventurers who were slaughtering the goblins right yes As and they, then they, they were running out there killing a bunch of goblins getting tired getting hungry coming over for a quick poutine and then going back to the murder you know keeping their carbs up this has right. a very like small town hockey rink vibe. <laughs> <laughs> There's a canteen and it only serves poutine and Twizzlers. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting some flashbacks, that's for sure. <laughs> okay, so what has uh, what has happened to our business venture? Like, did it collapse, or did our former friends here just run off with our money, or what? Uh, yeah, you got scammed by the, um, the necromancer that was actually a rat operating a, a zombie corpse. Uh, See, what this, this is why I was trying to railroad that guy's plans. I knew he was up to no good. All yeah. of these guests have been very untrustworthy so far. Basically, <laughs> no. while he was operating his own, shaking your hand, doing the business stuff, uh, his other remote controlled zombie walked away with a bag of gold. So, mm. you know, you can't trust a necromancer. Classic bait and switch. Mm. So you're still broke. You don't have any more poutine to sell, and you're on the run. And now you've found this cart here. Did did I was I able to at least abscond with um with my ventriloquist dummy? Uh, I believe his name is Endo, but also randomly changed his name to Spanky by accident when I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> And uh, Spanky is just what he does at night. So, yes, he's right. still Endo. Okay, I still have Endo. Is <laughs> is Gondelf still wearing Endo on her head with like a that like jumpsuit pulled over to make like the dummy's head is her head? Uh, I expect at this point she has probably handed over Endo back to you, you know, because you don't feel right without your ventriloquist dummy at your side. All right. Um, so, we're, we're, there's, this card is now in front of us. Yeah, it's, well, it's been to the side, but I expect because you guys are like, oh, an escape vehicle, you're slowly moving towards it. That's my railroading. You are going after this cart. All right. <laughs> so I, uh, I'm i going to walk up to this cart, and uh, I'm going to I'm gonna keep my, my dummy on the down low. I'm going to kind of hide it in my bag because I don't want to pull up my ace in the hole too early. That's fair. So I'm just going to saunter very gracefully up to this cart. And, uh, like, does it look like it's selling stuff right now? Right now, it looks like it's broken down. Like, it was supposed to go to the cave, and a wheel has fallen off the cart. Okay, and do I see anyone around it? You found this one person with a skin 
outfit of some kind that you can't quite recognize from a distance. But so like patch marked with uh, orange and yellow. Okay, then I want to I want to saunter up uh, gracefully, as I said, to the cart and. No, uh, if I sorry, if I remember correctly from our earlier conversation, orange and yellow is a mix of this is a platonic relationship and friends with benefits. <laughs> so you're getting the like, is it we're getting these kind of vibes? Although like it's yellow with orange patches, so like probably more the platonic. Yeah, it's probably vibes. still just like it's pretty chill. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I mean, just looking at her outfit right now, I'm seeing mostly yellow with like intermittent patches of orange. So it's kind of like this friend who, when they've got something else going on, tells you your friendship is platonic. But maybe when they get broken up with, then they come crawling back to you and they're like, oh, yeah, no, hey, I, I, I love hanging out with you and Netflixing. And like, yeah, you know, just like very inconsistent. But of course, it's a character, right? This is this is not it's all uh, characters. Here. This is this is not Giselle's real personality, as far as we know. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to saunter up very gracefully and uh, kind of airily just say, "Oh, hello there. Are you are you currently selling any any beverages? Oh, I am parched, Missus." Uh, that was me. That was me addressing Jean Vieve Gazelle, or this person who I do not know yet. I like to use the French French pronunciation of Genevieve. Yeah. I'm well. I'm, oh, is it? Oh, it's pronounced. Oh, it's spelled that way. Is it Jean Vieve? Yes. Jean Vieve uh, is well. Yeah, we'll, we'll we'll do Genevieve for simplicity's sake. We'll oh, we can do Jean Vieve. I yeah, no okay. no. She said Genevieve. It was me and my being a nerd who knows French uh, issues that kind of stampeded on this. So I I, I walk up to this um, to this person whose name I don't know yet, and I say, "Excuse, excuse me, miss." Do you do you have a do you have water? Well, let me take a quick look at my cart here and see what I got. And unfortunately, I don't. But I have a big tub of salsa. Will that be adequately hydrating for you? Uh, I'll, I'll I, I take whatever she offers me. I'm gonna just chug some salsa tight. That's that sounds brutal, but that's all, all the power to you. you feel. You feel the salsa slide down your throat, and you are invigorated. Um, can I just get a little? Because we haven't done any rolling yet, we're already into the game break. Can I actually get you to roll a body check here? I will. Yeah. To see how well you chug this salsa. I'm I'm trying to chug the whole thing. I mean, you're taking a drink of it. Okay. I, okay. Okay. Uh, well, <laughs> I'm gonna apply my minus one to this roll. So I got uh, I got a nine. On drinking salsa. Oh, oh man, you don't you, I have anything I can dip in the salsa. I don't know why I want to drink it. <laughs> well, you don't, so <laughs> unless you're dipping your dummy in there. So um, I mean, my my uh, my dummy is made of like tortilla chips, so. Oh yes, of course. But uh, you know, you uh, you drink the salsa successfully. Any chunks of you know onion, garlic, pepper, whatever's in there, go down without a problem. Uh, and you feel satiated? Question mark. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I I mean as satiated as you can be with salsa. Uh, I I I decide to strike up a conversation with this person who seems pretty nice and not likely to gouge out anyone's eyes or anything. So I say, excuse me, there, miss. What is your name? Well, my name is Genevieve Gazelle, and you are. Ah, I am Anjana Pectoris, and this is my assistant, Gondelf, and I point backward to to Gondelf. And uh oh, and you you must be from out of town. Are you are you from the Western Mountains by chance? Um I actually cannot remember where I came from. Like things have been a blur on this journey here, and I've been too dehydrated to understand your question. <laughs> That explains hmm. why there's no water on the card. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, so, Gon, you were just called the, the assistant of Angina. Do you have anything you want to say to that? Uh, well, I mean, I'm being an elf. I'm like pretty used to being like dismissed as like only the secondhand characters. Um, so I'm like just kind of roll my eyes and like kind of whatever about it. I'm like too exhausted from selling poutine to fight about it. Um, but I can see that uh, Genevieve is like pretty pretty parched and like is in dire need of assistance um so i'm gonna try and like freeze some air 
and and like because I had oh that was sorry that was my special ability is I can freeze things um so maybe like if I can like freeze some ice from the moisture in the air and like maybe collect it into a cup for her is that a thing I can do I think that you can do that if you roll the dice for it okay and what am I this would be body or what oh wait I no think, never mind you know, I think the end special yeah is it okay so I just yeah just roll two yep. dice two d6s I got a five and a one. I got six. Six. I'm going to say you get a small amount of water from the air, enough to like quench thirst, like, you know, of uh, a, a person who's on the way out kind of deal. Got okay. a little splash in there. All right. I hand it to Genevieve. Um, and then I, and then I also noticed, I, so because I, I kind of took a while to catch up, so I, I just noticed the vat of salsa. So as I'm handing her a glass of water, I kind of think to myself, like, why didn't she just have a glass of salsa if she was so thirsty? Notoriously uh, hydrating I, salsa. <laughs> but I but I roll my I was like kind of whatever and I, I hand her the glass anyways. All right. So everyone's hydrated for better or for worse here now, some with the tangy flavor of salsa on their tongues. Um so what are you guys planning on doing about this wagon right now? Uh I guess we're gonna like does it look repairable? It definitely looks repairable. You think you can get away with just replacing the sort of center plug of the wheel with just general a piece of wood that you could cut off a branch or something like that. It, basically jury rig it without too much effort. It's it's not a terminal fail. It's just that damn mass-produced bullshit these days. Nothing holds together anymore, mm. basically. So Gondel no. is like, immediately like pretty pretty confident about this um they dated a ganda or i i should say i should use first person um so I, i'm like pretty pretty confident that i can fix this i dated an engineer once um and uh, for like three weeks so like i'm pretty sure i know how things work and uh, i'm gonna attempt to fix this um right. so i'm gonna try i'm gonna go to the nearest tree and try and break a branch off all righty so i'm gonna say that uh you break the branch off without any issue, but if you're going to try to fix this, you're going to have to take a, I'm going to say a combined roll. Roll your mind and then your body after that Kay. to see if you can figure it out. Wait, so like 1d6 for each or 2d6? Uh, 2d6 is for, for both. Okay. Yeah, two pieces. Okay, so I got a nine for whatever, the, what was the first one? Mind or body? The first one was, the first one was mind. So you can like okay, so see I... it all coming together. Okay, so I got a nine and a seven. Seven, okay. So in your mind, you can see it all coming together, but much like somebody who can visualize a beautiful painting in their mind, but can't paint, it doesn't quite work out the way you planned it. Oh. And when you attempt to move the cart to put the wagon wheel back on place, you find that you just don't quite have the strength to do it by yourself. Now, the other two right now, you two are watching Gondelf struggle with this right now. So what is your guys' plan? Um, I, I mean, I guess I just want to, like, offer to help. Um, like, can I, can I kind of, like, boost her ability to do this by... You absolutely can. Okay. Just, to... just give me a little body roll as well. You're always, you're always making me do body rolls. I know, because I know you have a terrible body. <laughs> wow, feel called out. I got... <laughs> I, listen, I, I'm going to the gym soon, okay? Like, um, I, I got an eight. You got an eight? Perfect. So the two of you can manage to now move the cart together. One of you guys is, like, pushing up the cart. The other one's putting the wagon wheel into place. And you guys are able to... Start fixing it. However, as you guys are doing that, you hear that unmistakable sound of a goblin horde headed towards you. Not one that seems organized, one that seems panicked, like in full retreat. Hmm. Uh, I mean, what's, what's like behind them? Nothing at the moment. It seems they're just fleeing the scene of slaughter. There's no heroes or anything after them. They're just, they've managed to get out basically. And you see a small band of what appears to be about 10 to 15 goblins running towards you guys. 
they don't even seem to recognize you. It's like a blind panic at the moment. Okay. Uh, just to be safe, I want to duck behind the cart and put uh, Endo the dummy on top. Okay. Um, just because I I tend to get my face out there a lot, so I would I would like to hide if I can. You are perfectly able to hide. All right. I'm ready for him. All right. Uh, anyone else have plans here? You've you've gotten the cart somewhat repaired. You didn't have a chance to fully finish it before the goblins started showing up. So. So what I think I want to do because um, I have these, you know, silver utensils for my burrito bake making business that I haven't used in a while. I want to throw them to the uh, uh, to the crowd and see if it. Uh, if it, uh, you know, hits them in the eyeballs and can prevent them from attacking us. Damn, going straight for the eyes again. Okay, so we're going to do that. <laughs> no. Yeah, Kelly, you had a bad read on this. Well, <laughs> new character. You shouldn't have said anything. <laughs> no. It's no, supposed to be a nonviolent game once upon a time. Once upon a time, but unfortunately, like I said, capitalism makes monsters of assault, and you're all busy mm -hmm. people here. Uh, so what I'll get you to do then, uh, Genevieve, is to... Roll me a, a body roll. So 2d6s plus whatever your body modifier is here. Sounds good. So 3 and 3 plus 2, that's a total of 8. At 8, okay. So while the utensils don't pierce the goblins in any way, they do look at them and realize that, holy shit, this is silver, and they still almost stop, dead stop, to just start collecting these utensils up and look up to see what the source was. And when they see that it is you, they all of a sudden come up to you and in sort of like uh, an awe way, like, oh my god, this person's so wealthy, they're just throwing silver at us. So you've got this, this horde of little goblins around you now who seem entranced with what you what you can do, what they look at you like a boss, basically. This person's so cool. They're selling, they're throwing silver. So how are you going to address this crowd right here? So uh, Endo, the, uh, the 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 ventriloquist dummy, speaks up from the <laughs> from their perch on the thing and says, "Oh, hey there, little friends! I'm glad you decided to join us. Do you like a pot of tricks?" <laughs> All right. So they're. Uh, I don't even know how to go with this. Let's see here. Uh, I'm going to get you. Let's roll a let's roll a mind right now. Actually, what was your special ability then? All oh, right, it was seduction. So that doesn't really work in this instance because you're doing ventriloquism. So sure. I mean, I could I could just keep talking to them. Like like, did they look at me? Like, did they notice? Yeah, you me? Got, they got you got their attention because you're a wooden puppet on. Mm -hmm display here i have a question oh, right, my friends yeah yeah go ahead <laughs> so <laughs> your special ability is that you have a way of being able to like kind of coerce or like influence people who are sexually attracted to your character yep does that project to your ventriloquist dummy like this if someone important. happens to be attracted to ventriloquist <laughs> dummies will it affect them in the same way I feel like that's up to the GM's discretion. Like, I mean, maybe maybe I kind of roll with this advantage because, uh, you know, like my my vibe is still there, but the soothing uh, beauty of my voice uh, is kind of filtered. <laughs> you know, like I think I think what a lot of people like about me is the uh, the Northern Bell voice, and so when I'm when I'm speaking as Endo. Uh, I would presume that people are like a little less, in, it's like slightly less aroused by that voice. Slightly less, okay. Just, just, just a little bit though. So yeah, so I, I'm gonna address this crowd and say, you know, friends, we got lots more, lots more coins where those came from. If you can, you can just help us on our way. All right, so on that uh, thing, they're going to, they're gonna look at the person who threw the silver. They're gonna look at Genevieve here and they're gonna be like, uh, is he with you? Uh, yes, he is my dear friend. What are you gonna do about it? Mm? Oh, 
Well, they, they sort of cower for a second at that, and they're just like, oh, we're just interested in what the boss's uh, other friends are like, because they're now referring to you as boss. <laughs> mm -hmm, of course. Because now that they've been driven out of their homes, they're actually... I just saw my title. Sorry, that made me laugh for a second. Um, they're now looking for a new crew to run with because their old crew has been brutally massacred. So they're like, well, boss, we can uh, we can help move the cart towards wherever you need to go. Yes, absolutely. Just get yourself in there. Like, is there like a harness there that they can like, <laughs> like, is there like a horse harness or something? I this paid to a sleigh. <laughs> well, well, not tech. You paid. You paid for their services. If any, they're their employees right now. They have been paid in silver, silverware. Right, but how is the cart? How is the cart usually pulled? Um, it would usually be drawn by the person who owns the cart. It's one of those like little, like yeah, exactly. Yeah, you have the two bars that you have around you, and you just drive mm -hmm. it down there, like a wheelchair. Not like a wheelchair, <laughs> like like a small food cart that you would see where they just like. Have the two posts they pick up yeah, and you, walk you, with. You lift it and then yeah, exactly. Yeah, like oh, wheelbarrow. It's not, like, a, wheelbarrow. It's it's not like an entire wagon. No, 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 no. Oh, okay. Yeah. Also, oh, it man. feels a little bit problematic that we're like making these goblins into like a monolith that only craves silver, but <laughs> we can just skim right over that. But I wouldn't say we. I say would. I would say Josh did that. I'm just trying to befriend the goblins. Right. Cool. Please, they're they're far more complex. And if you look into my lore bible on this setting. <laughs> okay, so like, I mean, we need we need to scan these goblins somehow. So, uh, I guess like, um, like, do they have anything on them? Like, have they fled their homes with like the any... clothes on their back? The clothes on their back. Yeah. Um... <laughs> Can I even gonna... take the clothes on their back? <laughs> no, I feel like I'm nicer than that. I just like, I mean, I get the impression that we just want to be out of this place because. They, I don't know, these people really, um, like, if we're hanging around this, like, destroyed village too long, these adventurers are gonna, I don't know, they, they're bloodthirsty, right? So, um, yeah, I, I feel like recruiting some goblin followers is a good idea, so I, I um, but we don't have anything to offer, right? We're, we're completely out of supplies? Well, I mean, they've been paid in silver. We've got salsa. We do have salsa. I mean, everyone knows goblins love salsa. This is a, a, a stereotype, right? Oh yes, definitely. Um, so yeah, uh, as it stands, they uh, they are more than willing to assist you guys getting out of here if that means that they can get out of here with you guys. Yeah. All right, you folks, is it? What's the best way out of here? And are there any <clears throat> uh, hidden hordes having municipal treasure that those horrible raiders Wait. have not? Oh, what is that noise? Uh, that, that those horrible raiders have not accessed. Yeah, I'm gonna see if they have any stashes. Uh, okay, I'm going to get you to do a mind roll for me right then there. Sure. Um, what's, uh, is my mind also bad? I don't know. What is I, what is bad on your character? What isn't bad? No, on your the same. Uh, I got good psyche because I'm supposed to be charming. Um, yeah, okay, so I rolled a nine. You rolled a nine? Okay. So... They, uh, the one who see, appears to be the spokesperson for the goblins, and you can tell that he's the the top head cheese here because he's wearing a cow skull on his head, like a hat. And he says, well, we don't have anything that we can offer you except good, reliable labor that'll show up eight to five every day except weekends if you just let us work with you at the moment. Oh, you the are you some of them unionized goblins? <laughs> Workers' rights are no joke. We have rights. Well, all right, but I'll just tell you a bit more money if you uh just sign up with us as independent contractors. Yep, I got the contracts right here. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, they're not going to take the contracts on you because they do believe very much in the forty-hour work week, as anyone should. And uh, two of them jump on top of the shoulders of their comrades, and with some sort of finesse that you would not expect, they pick up the cart and start moving it. Uh, so what we, I was laying beside the cart as I was doing this, right? Yes, you were. So I'm going to try to just, like, 
grab onto the cart and kind of hold on to it like uh i don't know like an action star i guess okay uh perfect I feel like that scene in the raid too uh so yeah you you uh follow that you grab onto the cart and the goblins seem to strain for a second but just adjust for it on the fly basically and keep running that cart down back towards where you guys originally started the cave where all the adventurers come out and buy your wares. So all we've done is like a circle around like a forest. Is that like our That's entire your journey? Enti that has been your entire journey. That's how chaos. I'm glad you guys didn't go any further. I'd be here for the next two months. Oh boy. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Uh, so I look around um, specifically at Angina and I say, do, do we still have a goal here? Like what's, what are we trying to accomplish again? Uh, and uh, Angina is a little, sh or I'm a little shocked that Gondelf has uh, noticed it's me on the cart the whole time, but I, I brush it off. <laughs> um, I said, listen, Gondelf, all I've ever been trying to do is break even, and I'm pretty sure I've lost money so far, so we got two options. And I, I, I kind of, like, is the whole cart moving? The whole cart's moving right now. Are we all in it? You guys are, well, you're hanging off of it, because this is a small wheelbarrow cart basically right uh, and the other two are walking beside you yeah okay so oh, they're they're walking beside me so yeah. i kind of i pull gondelf in closely um and i whisper in her ear um we got two options either we scam the goblins or we scam the giraffe lady your dealer's choice <laughs> what why are those our only our, our only two options i tell you what you you give me um thirty bucks and I'll be out of your hair forever. We pretend none of this ever happened. Also, can I just ask why like you pulling me in close, why are you still doing your ventriloquist voice? Oh forgive me, dear. Sometimes I get caught up in the moment. Uh, <laughs> okay. I, I was I am a I trained as an actor when I was younger, you see. Mm. Uh but I'll I'll be I'll be why don't listen what what are, what are we really doing here? Uh, I don't know. I feel like I started off trying to find my parents' ice cream cart again, and mm. then that all melted and kind of went to shit. So I I kind of kind of feel like kind of feel like a, a man without a quest here. Um, but I think I you know, maybe I this new person can help us out. Yeah, I nod sagely and I push Gondelf away and I pull Jean sorry, Genevieve Gazelle in. And I'm like, All right, all right, draft lady. I mean, <clears throat> all right, draft lady. Now, what's, we're in a bit of a pickle here and that you may call it an existential crisis, if you will. We don't even remember what we want out of life anymore. What is it you want more than anything? Well, I want all the money I can get from having a really well done consolidated business venture. I say, oh boy. Uh, wait, I was like a mix of the two voices. <laughs> 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 and I, I just kind of clear my throat. <laughs> <laughs> well, my friend, let me tell you, I think I'm getting out of the business world. It's no good for me. There's too many removed eyeballs and far too many arranged marriages for my taste. Do you, uh, um, fuck. what's in front of us? Where, where are we headed right now? Like, <laughs> there you go. All right. So as you guys are discussing, you see the cave slowly coming into view here and uh, gone. The first thing you notice is your two parents sitting there. Uh -oh. Seemingly waiting for you. Uh oh. And they don't look particularly impressed either. Okay, I'm gonna immediately like go over to Angina and be like, "Dude, give me the dummy. <laughs> I need to. I need to. I need to hide here." Uh, I hand her the dummy, and okay. uh, yeah, I hand her the dummy. Okay, I'm All gonna right. try and hide behind the cart and um, pretend I'm not there and only talk through the dummy. Perfect. 
Okay, so as the cart rolls up, these two tall, dignified-looking elves, or are you a half-elf? I don't remember anymore. Um, I, who's to say? Your non-distinct elf or not elf parents mm -hmm. walk towards the cart, lean up against it, and hold up a very well uh, rendered picture of your face and say, have you seen this person around? They uh, should have been selling Fairy Queen franchised products here. And I hold up the ventriloquist dummy and I go, well, I don't know. I don't, <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen anyone that looks like that around these parts. Okay. And um, after listening to what they said, I realized how to respond and I backed them up. Like, oh, yeah, sorry. No, can't help you there, ma'am and sir. Like, All right. So. I give I give Genevieve like a good a nod, like thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for covering for me. My parents are gonna kick my ass. <laughs> are your are your parents the owners of this company? Yeah. I uh I so I realizing how much better even Gondelf is at my own character or my own vent, uh ventriloquist <laughs> dummy's voice. Um uh, like a kind of look of resignation comes over my face and uh I, I, I decide to walk over to these parents and see if I can muster one last lie. Um, and uh, I, I kind of like grab them by the sides and like I pull them away from the cart and I say, oh, are, are, are you, the, are you the, the parents of that, pole, of that pole soul in the picture? And they go, um, yes, have you, uh, have you heard anything about them? And I say, I'm afraid your son or daughter has died. There was the, you. You may see in the the local news, the local scrawlings, that there was a terrible raid by some terrible people, and uh, you know she was she was living a, a, such a good life. She was betrothed to a local goblin king, and she she made so much money for your company, and it was all taken by those horrible adventures. And I I like force like a single tear out. Uh, and I'm I'm truly sorry for your loss. Just know that she died uh, serving your company's bottom line. <laughs> Comfort indeed to these parents. Yeah. Uh, one takes a step back and goes, oh my goodness. We were coming here to fire them from the franchise because they haven't been bringing in profits for days now. But this explains so much. They seem so gung-ho about selling... Fairy Queen ice cream to these adventures. Oh, and they were, they were. In fact, they made record profits in that village. But, you know, once they'd run out of village to pillage, those adventurers turned on us. And I kind of like describe what they look like to them and be like, just just send your, your corporate goons after them and you'll reclaim all your losses. But, you know, if I can be honest, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Delph, it seems that you're... You're missing a child, and I realize what I'm missing most in life is an opportunity at honest work. You see, I just, I spent my whole life lying and cheating and stealing and running around, and, and none of it brought me nothing. I, I just, I wish I could have had a mom and a dad, just, just like Gon used to talk about, talk about how wonderful they were. That's the one thing I never had in life. And I kind of look at them with big puppy eyes, and I'm like, <laughs> will y'all take me in as your daughter? <laughs> All right, so I'm going to use your roll, psych roll. I'm even going to let you uh, you roll your strongest staff for this one, because you are you are psychologically attacking these people. <laughs> oh, no, you misunderstand. I, like, what's happening is uh, I've, I've realized that, like, I'm not even a good con artist. <laughs> because I've done nothing but like make my situation worse since the beginning of this adventure. And the one thing I had going for me, which is my ventriloquist dummy, um, someone else is better at. <laughs> so I'm genuinely trying to give up my my life of crime and uh turn in your leaf. Yeah, yeah. Well, because it turns out what I was longing for all along um was just some real human connection. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna roll psyche. Perfect, perfect. Oh, okay, I got a seven. Seven. Okay. Mm -hmm. They seem a little bit taken back by 
what appears to be genuine sincerity in wanting to change, but it happens so fast that they sort of just take a step back and they're like, well, uh, we can't, they, they struggle for words for a second. We can't promise you any kind of familial relationship, but if you are looking for honest work, um, take our card here and they uh, produce a card out of midair that says Fairy Queen, a uh, Delph division and give it to you. Mm -hmm. It has contact info on where to send your nearest carrier pigeon to set up your own franchise. And they say, if you want to join the Fairy Queen family, you can contact us at this number and we will we'll assist you the same way that we assist any of our franchise, uh, franchise owners in setting up a cart. We, uh, with the loss of our child's cart here, we might need to set up a new operation here. So having emotionally bared my soul and gotten like a business opportunity in response, <laughs> um, the facade starts to crack and my um, it, I start to have an emotional meltdown and uh, like I'm crying <laughs> and, you know, not I, I just say, oh, thank you, kind folks, because that's, you know, that's the that's the image I want to project for them. But I project my voice to the dummy, which is currently like sitting wherever Gondalf has it. And I say, oh, wow, why I stuck a bunch of clowns? Can't even, can't even care taking a soul to love who wants them so badly. Wow, I'd be embarrassed if these were my parents. Oh, Lord. Um, but like, uh, yeah, my lips aren't moving the whole time that happens, so. All right, so the, uh, the gentleman, Mr. Delph, takes a look at this uh, dummy is like, if you have something to say, say it to us directly. And he strives over to the cart. And as he's heading towards there, what's Gon going to do? Um, so I'm going to continue to try and hide. I'm going to like maybe like pull like more of a blanket over myself, but like keep the ventriloquist dummy. And I think I'm going to try and deflect and I'm going to say, you know, maybe I'm... Maybe I'm just projecting my own feelings on this whole situation, and maybe I just don't know enough about the complex emotions of the people involved, and <clears throat> I'm sure that just losing your only child must be a real hard situation for y'all, and I, uh, I just, uh, I really feel for this young woman, and I would, I would totally, I totally feel like if you wanted to accept them as your child, that would be great, but also, like, it's totally understandable if you might be a little upset from losing <laughs> someone that seems to be very cherished to you. Um, please, sir, uh, pay me no mind. <laughs> and then immediately after that, the dummy says, ah, I'm just kidding, you bunch of fools. Come at me. Come find me. <laughs> well, I've had enough of you and your faces. Let's go. You and me, let's rumble. All right. So I'm going to have you guys roll opposing psych rolls here. To see who's the better ventriloquist here. Oh, buddy, you're gonna you're gonna get lit up. I'm at plus two psyche. Oh boy. Uh, which which gives me a seven. Or sorry, an eight. An eight. An eight. Okay. I got a two. Oh. <laughs> so, without even stopping for a second, Mr. Delph grabs the ventriloquist, and you're not quite able to move your arm in time. And you're pulled up, and you're facing your father, right? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, wait, we're straight. Hopefully, worst nightmares are coming true. Um, <laughs> yeah, what up, old man? Is that all you got? That's what the ventriloquist dummy says. <laughs> and, but then Angina says, oh, Lord, everybody stop fighting. I hate the fun. And then the endo says, oh, come on, don't listen to her. She don't know nothing. She ain't nothing. You ain't nothing. Fight me, old man. <laughs> Um, and I go, what, is John, what is Genevieve Gazelle doing all this? That's what I want. Yeah, to that's what I'm actually wondering as well. Is this chaos is happening? Yeah, well, I'm just, uh, well, and the, the, uh, the, the little goblins that are also mm -hmm. pulling the cart, we're just, <laughs> um, we're, you know, I'm not sure if popcorn exists in this world, but we are essentially <laughs> just, <laughs> <laughs> you know, right. rhetorically. It was probably a wise popcorn. decision. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, at the same time, like, you know, catching glances at them to make sure that, you know, that they are uh, not uh, 
you know, not adding fuel to the fire, as they say in the uh, heated conversations. <laughs> I don't think anyone who's been involved with Zen Adventures so far at any point has had a good experience. So it's probably <laughs> for the best. You're probably the smartest person we've encountered. Right. Yeah. As if to sort of disentangle herself from what appears to be a brawl happening, uh, Mrs. Delph actually makes her way towards you, watching as well, and she asks... Uh, very politely for what appears to be the situation at the moment, she asks, and uh, what do you do? <laughs> oh, to me, right? Yes, just that sort of awkward, like, as everyone else is screaming, you're just sort of just like, uh, yeah, so how's the weather? <laughs> that sort of kind of thing. So okay. what, what do you do? Well, ma'am, um, I am a uh, food cart owner, and I sell burritos made, named after precious metals. And the specialty of my uh, little cart is called the golden guacamole. Also, ma'am, did you know that I can draw perfect circles? So, like, every tortilla that I use for my burritos is a perfect circle? Yeah. Prove it, lady! Prove it! <laughs> all right okay perfect so as that conversation is happening we're going to move over back to you're facing your father in the face right now and he facing face, him in the face facing him in the face and his face contorts to realize that not only is his daughter or son i actually don't know what your character is i've just been using they the entire time because i haven't been sure i i did not assign myself a gender so i've also been using they um, perfect that works for me inclusivity uh so as you look at their face contorts and they realize that their child has not been dead they've been lied to by the child and all that rage of eventually wanting to kick your ass for their cart and product being missing all comes back all at once so and, yeah, okay go ahead. red what are you gonna do um i go oh hey dad um and i think and i'm like i go back through all my years of childhood and growing up in this like you know, business owning family. And I say the only thing that I know is going to diffuse the situation. And I say, hey, mom and dad, I have a business proposition for you. Um, I say, this woman over here that we just met today, her name is Genevieve. She owns a <clears throat> food cart that sells like burritos. She has so much salsa. We sell ice cream. I think that what we should do is put our carts together and start selling the two of them as one thing. People can get their, get their salsa, get something with a little bit of heat, something with a little bit of spice, and then they can get their ice cream, cool themselves off, have a nice, refreshing cone. What do you think? I'll run it. You just have to, you guys, if you guys like pay for the initial overhead, I'll run it. No, it's going to be a great business. What do you think? The vein in your father's temple appears to shrink just a little bit. <laughs> can I roll Psyche? You absolutely can. All right. Come on, Dad. <laughs> I got a nine. A nine. Okay. He seems intrigued. Intrigued enough to let go of you and look and say, turns over to Genevieve and says, is this the case? Are you looking for a partnership? Yes, absolutely. And I think that with the uh, desserts um, complimenting and, you know, satisfying our customers after they have one of my golden guacamoles, I think it would be a successful venture. All right. As if pulling again from nowhere, a pen and a checkbook appear in midair and he begins to write out a amount of money that seems a lot higher than it probably should be but he is excited for this opportunity to diversify as he's mumbling mumbo jumbo about business i've always been thinking that we need to diversify our interests ice cream might be a good dessert thing but we could really push into that that mm -hmm. dinner and lunch menu as well and really we could upsell, we could upsell. He looks over to Angina and is like, would you be interested in becoming an employee of this new Fairy Queen Golden Guac business venture here? Uh, I kind of look down at my feet because I'm embarrassed that my, uh, well, I mean, I'm embarrassed that my attempted emotional vulnerability didn't work. Uh, <laughs> I'm embarrassed that my uh, attempt at starting a fight didn't work. And I'm embarrassed that I got out ventriloquist did 
uh, well, except for the last part. So um, I, I'm, I'm feeling very emotionally torn and I say, you know what, y'all? I think I just need some time to myself in the woods to figure myself out. And I kind of slowly start walking off like into the into the sunset. And then I get just far enough away that it's awkward turn around and come back for endo the uh <laughs> my my ventriloquist dummy and then i like quietly grab it without saying anything and wander off into the forest okay um but turning to the genevieve here uh mr delf goes well this uh this amount right here should uh cover any expenses about uh expanding your cart a little bit as well as ingredients uh, and producing another card with just a snap of his fingers, he hands it over to Genevieve and says, if you have any questions or any need for monetary uh, overhead expense covering anything, just, just let me know. He's he is getting more and more amped up as he thinks about this business venture and then looks to his child and goes, this might be the best idea you've had since moving out of our house. Then I pick up the check and look at it, and I was blown away by the amount of money. And one of the little goblins that were still holding up the cart um, hops onto my shoulder and looks over and says, you can buy a lot of new silverware with this. <laughs> like, that is so true. <laughs> it sure is. And finally, the... Mr. Delph, with a, a booming voice that seems to just carry through the woods, he goes, and Miss Angina, for bringing us together with all this, we would be more than happy to maybe consider having you over at Thanksgiving every year. Uh, I've wandered into the woods, into the woods, into the woods, to the point that I can only just barely hear them, and they hear like a faint echoing, so faint you're not sure that you can actually hear it but it sounds a lot like oh back me old man and then that's all you ever hear from angina ever again <laughs> all right so with that i think we can finally bring an end to this full circle that we've brought from a cave to another cave and back again so Perfect. our little epilogue right here Oh wait, was that too early? No, no, it's all good. It's all good. I can. No, I you can read the epilogue. Example. It's fine. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, Angina, after leaving emotionally vulnerable, learned that you can't trust anyone in this business, and returns to her old ways of scamming, bullshit, and dishonest work. However, due to this painful emotional scar she carries for the rest of her life from being vulnerable and getting it spit back. She's actually better at it now, but before too long, I'm sure she'll find herself in trouble with the law again and trying to stay low with honest work. But at least she has a card she knows she can call at this point. The Fairy Queen and Golden Glock, patent pending, uh, joint venture does very well for itself based on the ability to upsell ice cream after eating one of the super spicy burritos with a side of Golden Glock. Toot toot. Uh, as such, a Gondelf does not feel the need to actually go back to university. They're becoming a venture capitalist. Mm. Uh-oh. Yeah, yeah. And Genevieve, <laughs> paying her employees a fair wage and only working them 40-hour weeks, uh, gets to the point where she actually becomes an equal partner in the Fairy Queen business. And when Mr. Delf decides to retire decides to make you the CFO of the entire organization. Hey, woo. And that is where you can play the final music, Kelly. I know what you're talking about. Oh no, we got a purple heart. <laughs>